Hi everyone, welcome to this truck versus ute comparison video. So here's the ute, my uh, PX Ranger, and here's the truck. It's an Isuzu NPS 75155, a modified by All Terrain Warriors. That's what it looks like standard, and All Terrain Warriors have a range of modifications which uh, we'll run through, and then in the video we're just going to put the Ranger over terrains and then put the Isuzu over to terrains so you can see the difference in performance between the two. So let's take a look at the engine and to get to that you need to tilt the bull bar forwards then that allows you to tilt the cab forwards. So removing those eyes at the front which aren't recovery points, those are underneath the bull bar. And then once you've done that what you do is you grab these levers, pull them up and then with a little bit of pulling you can actually tilt the entire cab forwards like that and then you can access the engine. Standard engine, not powerful compared to a modern ute, only 114 kilowatts and 419 newton meters. Five speed manual gearbox, the low range is sufficiently low, there's the selected air and four drive selector, so that's not changed either, We've, even with 37 inch tyres, and that's the hill start assist system. And here we've got manual locking hubs with wheel nut indicators. The vehicle has been lifted by about 50 millimetres and the suspension replaced front and rear. The bump stops form part of the suspension. Um, because of the lift, various things like brake lines have to be extended um, and you can see the pack which increases the height. And the springs are parabolic so there's fewer springs and that means that there's less interleaf friction and that means that the damping can be done not by the leaf friction but by the dampers itself. That gives you a better ride. Now with off-road trucks the chassis is designed to flex in addition to the suspension but you don't want the body, in this case the camper, to flex. So there's this subframe and that will allow the body to flex independently of the chassis. Watch for that in the footage later on. This size run a 19.5 inch diameter rim but this one is running a 17 inch diameter rim. That's to allow more sidewall so you can air the tyres down. Very important for off-roading. Now the wheels look different front and rear but actually they're identical. They just turned 180 degrees round and that allows the wheel track um, to be the same so that the front wheel runs in exactly the same rut as the rear wheels reducing drag. Is made by ATW out of aluminium with a steel subframe, and there's a Sherpa 17,000 pound winch in the front with 45 metres of synthetic rope. Every off road vehicle is going to touch down the growth at some point, particularly one as wide and tall as this. That's why there's a brush guard, although that doesn't go around the camper at the back. Recovery points are an essential, and there's recovery points front and rear, although the ratings are yet to be determined. Fuel capacity has been doubled to a total of 280 litres. The suspension is still relatively harsh, so aftermarket seats cushion the ride. At the front, the 37 inch tyres mean 275mm of ground clearance, but at the back, because the axle rating is so high, you've got a giant diff, there's only 215mm, which is about the same as my Ford Ranger. Now the camper was originally carried on this D-Max extra cab, but really it was too heavy for it, so hence the move to the Isuzu. So let's compare the Isuzu against my Ford Ranger PX which is representative of a touring four wheel drive. So here they are side by side and here they are head to head. Now let's look, take a look at the specifications. Starting with the length, now the Isuzu is about 600mm longer which is a reasonable amount, certainly enough to make a difference in tight tracks although not as much extra length as you might assume just by looking at the two side by side. Width-wise, uh, the Isuzu again is wider by about 150-200mm. If this was a Nissan Patrol Y62 we're comparing against though, the difference would only be about 40mm extra width. Now height, that is where the real difference comes in because the Isuzu is about 2600mm and that's just to the top of the cab. My range is maybe 1900 2 meters, uh, but the Isuzu measurement excludes the camper which is considerably taller than the cab and also a little bit wider. The turning circle, uh, again Isuzu is greater as you'd expect, it's got a longer wheelbase, 13.6 um, meters is quite manageable though off-road off um, and other vehicles like the Defender 130 also have a big turning circle. 
Now the unladen weight weights with vehicles like the Isuzu light trucks are quite complex. The weight I'm quoting here is the weight as it rolls out of the factory without even a tray on it. And that's also the same weight quoted for the Ranger, but that obviously comes with a tub on the back. Now I will do another video about weights for light trucks. Um, when you've got all the all-terrain modifications on it, um, including the tray, the weight is 4,200 kilos. Now the GVM or the maximum it can weigh is 7 tonnes for the Isuzu. Normally that would be 7.5 but because of the single tyres it's derated to 7,000 kilos. Ranger only 3,200, much smaller vehicle. Now the payload from base, and again that's base out of the factory, not um, before you've actually added any modifications, is 4,000 kilos. Uh, for the Ranger that's 950, but remember out of that you've got to take all of the modifications, your tyres, your winch, your ball bar, etc, and then whatever you're going to carry. Now the weight ready to tour on the IC is about 5,900, um, on the Ranger it's about 3,100 and that means that there's about 1,100 kilograms of payload spare on the IC, so that's a long way below GVM and remember that's the underneath the 7000 GVM, let alone the 7500 design weight, whereas the Ranger, like most modern touring four-wheel drive, just pretty much squeaks under its GVM. And now we're going to run the Ranger and Isuzu over the same terrains to see how they compare, including the Hill of Truth.
Keep going.
wing mirror is going to touch.
So the ISOZO really outperformed a ranger in these tests, but why? Well, there's five real reasons. One is that the tyres are a greater diameter, 37 versus 32 inch. That means the taller tyres are much better able to climb over obstacles. Second, the ISOZO has got better suspension flex thanks to live axles, but also that chassis flex as well, so it can keep all four wheels on the ground effectively and always have traction. There's also good front to weight distribution on the Isuzu as well, whereas the Ranger is quite rear heavy. Then the Isuzu has got really effective limited slip differentials front and rear, whereas the Ranger relies only on brake traction control, not very effective at that, or a rear locker, and in that case, the brake traction control doesn't work on the front axle. Finally, the Isuzu has a longer wheelbase, whereas so if the ruts are dug out by normal sized 4x4s, it often can sort of straddle the ruts a little bit better. But limitations, well, obviously, just size and um, and width, really. Um, if you can get past those, then the Isuzu is a pretty incredible off-road vehicle. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel to learn more about full drives, cars, towing, racetracks, driving techniques, and whatever else the readers find interesting. Thanks. Bye.